So, I have finally done it. I have finally finished Tokyo Magnitude 8.0. So, I wanted to get this video up last week, but things happened, didn't have time, and now I am here a week later. But, it's better late than never, that's the general saying. So, I finally finished it, and if you're unaware, I did a first impressions of this series about a week and a half, two weeks ago, and most likely I have it linked in the description of this video if you've yet to hear anything about Tokyo Magnitude. You can go to my first impressions and see what I thought of the first three episodes, and then you can see if you like the series and if you want to check it out, because this video will contain spoilers. I'm going to be discussing the ending of the series, the overall message, just different things like that. So if you do not want to be spoiled for Tokyo Magnitude 8.0, I do not recommend you to continue on past this point. I recommend you to go to my first impressions if you know nothing about it and go watch that or watch the series. It's your decision, your choice. But anyways, though, to get right into it, Tokyo Magnitude as a story. It is not a story with a happy end. It is not a story where everything is okay, where everybody smiles, where everybody will be okay. Tokyo Magnitude isn't that type of story. It's a type of story that is grounded in realism and actually depicts what would happen if an earthquake, an 8.0 earthquake, hit 25 kilometers underneath Tokyo, Japan. Devastation. A lot of devastation would happen, if that happened. And the main point of Tokyo Magnitude 8.0 is to showcase an experiment. What would happen if this type of earthquake did hit, and just see the general consensus of how everybody would react after said earthquake. The story, overall, on a piece of paper, is relatively simple. It's a very simplistic story. The foundation of it is simplistic. But it's the characters that drive the story, and it's also how it ends that really just concretes that message so much more into you. Natural disasters are tragic, and there's always someone when a natural disaster happens, someone dies or someone gets gravely injured. There's usually hundreds, maybe thousands, and that's the sad truth. And the way this show was, it didn't try to sugarcoat it. It didn't try to sugarcoat how tragic natural disasters are. It didn't try to sugarcoat what, you know, how many people could die if an earthquake hit. It didn't try to do that. And the overall story and the message of it didn't even protect our main characters. For instance, the earthquake, if an earthquake hit, almost everybody's going to be affected, or somewhat. Someone is going to be affected some way if you live in Japan. And even outside of Japan, you're going to be affected in some way. So... The main character not having any plot armor really made this show for me because it made it more realistic. It allowed you to see that there isn't going to be a happy ending if something like this happened. And that's the truth. That's the cold hard truth. No happy ending for something like this. And I like how the series stuck to that. And the way one of our characters died throughout the journey, Yuki died, the younger brother, it makes it so much sadder because... One of the sayings, the saying goes like this, you don't know what you have lost until you have lost it. I, I wonder about some of you probably have already heard this saying once before, but the main moral of that, or what it means, is that people don't tend to really understand or cherish the things that are around them. For instance, let's say a family member, until they're gone, and the, until like, for instance, they're dead. And that's kind of the story here. It's like, you don't know what you have until you've lost it. And it's a very honest to god truth it, it, it's really truthful of how that message is i mean the way mirai as the main female character started off in her development throughout the you know the journey of the series and how she lost her brother she didn't realize what she really lost or what she had until it was gone and that's the tragedy of all of it because it's kind of sad it takes something like this something as tragic as a natural disaster like an 8.0 for someone to open up their eyes and see what they really had before anything happened and that's kind of what makes this series just so much sadder. It really does. And I, I like overall how it stick to its guns, try to be realistic throughout the entire journey. And overall, the way the characters were done too, they were done in a way that felt real. Like the characters acted their age, Mirai acted her age, Yuki acted at his age. I mean, at some points he acted a little bit more mature than his age, but overall the majority of these kids, they did act mature, the parents acted mature, the overall side characters acted mature, and everything fit the roles of what you would see if something kind of like this happened. For instance, you would see assholes trying to push people out of the way to get to a spot first to get food, or you would see how, you know, doctors couldn't, you know, treat everybody that's been injured. There's thousands of people that's 
been injured, they can't treat everyone. They're going to have to, you know, treat the critically injured first. And then also, even some critically injured are not going to be able to get treatment because there's just so many flooding the hospitals. And the way this show depicts that, I really appreciate it. Especially with how... Yuki died. That That is something that really got me. It was such a strong message that it really shocked me. Now, I knew around episode 8 that Yuki was dead. I'm not one of those people that took to the final episode to realize that Yuki was dead as fuck. I, it, I didn't take that long. I knew on episode 8, he was dead. And what Mirai was seeing was just, you know, her psychotic breakdown of thinking her brother is still alive, but he's really not. And I'm not the biggest fan of the way that was dragged out. But however, the way he died is what really got to me. And the way he died was not because of the earthquake. It was actually the aftermath after the natural disaster. And that, that is something that's very sad. Because this boy, he makes it through all this hell early on in the series. You know, his sister tries to save him in a place that's burning down. And, you know, like the floors are cracking and crashing down. His sister goes out of her way to save him. He finally gets out. They go onto a boat. They get across the river. They escape a bridge, you know, collapsing. They just get through all this stuff. And eventually throughout their journey, the brother gets sick because you got to realize he's a young kid and, you know, it's, it's fucking hot. It's, it's really hot. And as a young boy, a boy that is, you know, been stripped away from his family pretty much. He's just with his sister. They've been sleeping outside in the cold or the heat. You know, it's majority of it's been hot, actually, if you take to the weather of, the, you know, the series. It's actually really, really hot. And the kids are traveling in this immense heat. No change of clothes, no shower. They're not getting anything really proper to eat. I mean, they're just eating food that's there for them for relief efforts and that that's all it is they're not eating the best food possible you see that throughout the episodes so you got to remember this kid that's very young is already been through an earthquake but on top of that he's not getting good rest for his age and then you have to worry about the heat that's just baking them and then the food they're not eating is you know just it's not that good for you it's not really going to help you out completely so the way the boy died yuki died our main male character it was sad because something like this would happen it would legit happen like no nothing to it like this would happen i mean you would have it to where an earthquake would happen and if you know a boy or someone or a girl or whoever was separated and you know they were having to walk back because of you know the long journey eventually you're just gonna probably die i mean depending on your age depending on the condition and all that i mean clearly you know a lot was stressing him out you know he had to drag himself through all these miles to try to get back to his house and, I mean, he finally just succumbed to the weather. He died from what I can assume is heat stroke. He got too hot, and he hit the ground wrong, broke his neck. That's what it looked like to me. And that can happen. I mean, it, there's stuff on the news all the time to where, you know, someone could get out of their bath and break their neck. They slip and fall and break their neck. I'm not even joking. Stuff like that happens. Someone walking out of their bathtub, trying to get out, they slip break their neck, that, that's really, that's happened, so the way the boy died, it, it just makes it so much sadder to know he didn't die thanks to the natural disaster, he died because of the aftermath after it, and that, that really got me, because you would think a series that's about an earthquake wouldn't really have a death like that, a central core death, you'd think the, the main central death would be thanks to the earthquake, but it was not necessarily the earthquake i mean even though the conditions led up to it it was actually other things it was the weather for instance you know the heat that really killed him so yeah i, I gotta say a very tasteful death by the way very tasteful death it was something that caught me by surprise i mean i expected someone to die before the series was over i didn't expect any of the the main central cast or one of the family members to live i expected like someone to be dead maybe the parents maybe the sister maybe the brother i expected someone to die but i didn't expect that way they died like maybe burning death because you know they're collapsing of buildings maybe a fire started or something i didn't expect that now, talking about one of the parts I didn't like about the series was the way the death was dragged out. Uh, like I said, around episode 8, I already keyed in that, you know, he was dead. It, it was very obvious because of how Marty was acting, how she was just interacting with, you know, Mirai the entire time, the way she had this worried look on her face, and then also, like, you know, how she said together at the end of, like, episode 9. I mean, just overall, there was a lot of key signs and things that hinted that, you know, Yuki was already dead, and Mirai was was, you know, just seeing things, and the way it kind of dragged it out, it made, I guess, the 
scene a little bit more impactful because it was sad to see Mirai trying to have this conflicting emotions about, you know, accepting her brother's death. And, I mean, at the end of the series, she does accept that he's dead. And that is a really good message, too, because you've got to continue moving forward. When you lose something, you can't just sit there and wallow in your own misery. You've got to keep moving forward for yourself, but also for your loved ones. And and I like that message, too, the way Tokyo Magnitude 8.0 described that. Let us know that it's sad, it's tragic, and these things, they happen at moments you don't expect. But you do need to continue moving on. You need to continue moving forward. You don't need to just turn around and stay still in a fetal position. You, you need to continue moving step by step. And the way Mirai said that, it lets you know that she has finally discovered her future. She knows what she wants to do. And if I had to place any of my bets on what she wants to do, I'm going to assume she wants to do something related to robots. Because there was a message throughout this story. And it wasn't, you know, told to us at the end. We didn't get to really see a huge, long epilogue what Mirai is doing in the future. But you kind of can assume what is going on here and what Mirai might do. After something like this, something like an earthquake that, you know, took her brother's life and after this conversation with this boy and then also her brother how her brother was very interested in robots and how this boy she met also was interested in robots to save people I feel like Mirai is going to go down a path to where she wants to learn how to create robots or you know create things that could help out people in time of natural disasters you know of time of need and I feel like that's what she's going to do what that's the future she has chosen for herself because something like this will stick with you for the rest of your life I mean you need to continue moving forward but something like this you just don't forget about it's not something that you know you can just cast aside it will stick with you and that's kind of what Mirai is probably going to do. She's probably going to use this in a way to help others in the future and help people, help other brothers, other sisters, help, you know, family members, anyone she possibly can. I feel like that's what she's going to do. And so, yeah, the story of Tokyo Magnitude 8.0 it had its problems overall. There were some things I had issues with, like I said, the extended, you know, drawn out death of Yuki. But there's other little minor things here and there. But regardless of that, though, I feel like the main importance of the message of the series was just letting us know that you don't stop moving. Even if something tragic like this happens, you don't stop. You got to continue moving on for the sake of the ones you lost. So. Well done, Tokyo Magnitude. Yeah, you touched me. You touched my heart. You did a good job. You did. I mean, it's not my favorite series I've ever seen. I, it's not. But it's definitely a series that I will remember. And it's a series that I will recommend to someone that wants to see a realistic anime that, you know, really tells a good character-driven story. So, how do you all feel about Tokyo Magnitude 8.0? Do you feel like this series deserves a little bit more respect because of trying to tell a realistic story and allowing us to see that, you know, not all series have a happy ending? And that, that's kind of what this is. It doesn't have a happy ending. There, that, all that tragedy happened, and so many lives were lost, thousands, and they, they will never come back. And how do you all feel about that? How do you all feel about the realism of Tokyo Magnitude? Did you enjoy that, or... Were you upset with the way it went? Just let me know your honest thoughts in the comments below. And yeah, I'm glad I watched this series. I really am. I'm really glad I watched this. I'm very thankful for the Chibit that sent to this to me a very long time ago. If it wasn't for the Chibit sending me Tokyo Magnitude, honestly, I wouldn't have known about this series. So I really appreciate the Chibit in the past sending me Tokyo Magnitude 8.0. I really, really am happy you did. Because, like I said, I probably wouldn't have watched this. I, I probably wouldn't. I wouldn't even know about it. And thanks to, you, you know, you Chibit's constantly sending me stuff and, like, sending me BDs, DVDs of how I find out about certain series. And being able to watch them or read them. Manga, too. So thank you very much. I had a very fun time watching this and I recommend this completely to anyone else that wants to see a series grounded in realism and focused around earthquakes. I recommend it. So yeah, that's it. You all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.